Welcome to our Mystery Sleep Stories channel, your sanctuary for meditation and a peaceful sleep. Immerse yourself in the soothing embrace of sleep-inducing tales, carefully crafted to transport you to mysterious lands. Let the gentle rain and serene sounds of nature accompany you on this quest for deep sleep. Say goodbye to restless nights and welcome the embrace of a restful sleep with our mystery bedtime stories. So, let the tale begin. The Golden Horn of Valhalla Chapter 1 The Enchanted Forest of Alfheim Freya, a skilled shield maiden, had long dreamed of finding the Golden Horn of Valhalla a mystical artifact that could summon the gods to aid her people. Guided by a vision and driven by a fierce determination, she set out on her quest. Her journey began in the enchanted forest of Alfheim, a realm known for its ethereal beauty and mystical inhabitants. The forest was bathed in a perpetual twilight, the air shimmering with the glow of thousands of tiny lights. These were the light elves, delicate and ethereal beings who moved through the trees like wisps of smoke. The trees themselves were ancient, their leaves a silvery green, and their trunks twisted into fantastical shapes. The forest floor was covered in a thick carpet of moss and flowers that seemed to glow faintly, adding to the otherworldly atmosphere. As Freya walked along the moss-covered path, she felt the presence of the elves, their eyes watching her from the shadows. The air was filled with the soft rustling of leaves and the occasional melodic chirping of birds. The light elves moved gracefully through the trees, their forms almost blending with the mist that hung in the air. Freya could feel their eyes upon her, filled with curiosity and ancient wisdom. At a crossroads in the heart of the forest, a light elf appeared before her. His form was radiant, and his eyes were wise beyond measure. I am Leo Salfar, he said, his voice like the tinkling of bells. We have been expecting you, Freya. Your journey is destined. Follow me, and I will guide you through the forest. Leosulfar led Freya through the winding paths of Alfheim, pointing out the hidden dangers and offering advice on how to navigate the enchanted woods. He moved with a fluid grace, his presence bringing a sense of calm and security. As they walked, Freya encountered the magical creatures of the forest. Foxes with eyes that glowed like embers darted through the underbrush, their movements swift and silent. Deer with antlers that sparkled like crystals watched her with unblinking eyes, their presence serene and otherworldly. High above, owls with feathers as white as snow perched on branches, speaking in riddles that echoed through the trees. Each encounter was a test of Freya's bravery and wisdom. The foxes led her through narrow paths that twisted and turned, challenging her sense of direction. The deer stood as silent sentinels, their gaze urging her to move forward with caution and respect for the forest. The owl's riddles required her to think deeply and creatively, testing her intellect and intuition. With each challenge, Freya grew more determined her resolve strengthened by the beauty and mystery of Alfheim. The deeper they ventured into the forest, the more enchanting it became. The trees seemed to whisper secrets, their branches forming archways that guided her path. Streams of crystal-clear water flowed gently over smooth stones, their surfaces reflecting the shimmering lights of the elves. Flowers bloomed in every shade of the rainbow, their petals delicate and radiant. The 
air was filled with a sweet fragrance, and the gentle hum of nature's song provided a soothing background to their journey. As they neared the edge of the forest, Leosafar turned to Freya and said, The path ahead is fraught with peril, but your heart is strong. Remember the light of Alfheim, and let it guide you in the darkest moments. His words were filled with a quiet strength and confidence that bolstered Freya's spirit. With those words, Leosafar vanished into the forest, leaving Freya to continue her journey alone. She took a moment to absorb the serene beauty of Alfheim one last time. The forest had been a place of trials and revelations, each moment a step closer to her ultimate goal. She felt a deep gratitude for the guidance and wisdom she had received from the Light Elves. Freya stepped out of the forest, her heart filled with determination and a renewed sense of purpose. The journey through Alfheim had prepared her for the challenges ahead, and she knew that the light of the forest would be with her always, a beacon of hope and strength. As she moved forward, she carried with her the memories of the enchanting realm and the lessons it had imparted. The path to the Golden Horn of Valhalla was still long and uncertain, but Freya's resolve was unshakable. Guided by the wisdom of Alfheim and the strength of her own heart, she was ready to face whatever lay ahead. The forest had been the first step in her journey, and it had shown her that with courage, wisdom, and determination, she could overcome any obstacle. Chapter 2 The Serpent Sea Freya emerged from the enchanted forest of Alfheim onto the rocky shores of the Serpent Sea. The contrast between the serene beauty of the forest and the dark, foreboding waters before her was stark. The sea stretched out, vast and seemingly endless, its surface churning with hidden currents. The waters were a deep, inky black, and the air was thick with the scent of salt and the promise of danger. Freya knew that crossing this sea would be one of her greatest challenges yet. On the shore, she found a sturdy longship, its dragon-headed prow pointing defiantly toward the horizon. The ship seemed ancient, yet solid, built for treacherous voyages such as this. Freya climbed aboard, her heart filled with resolve and determination. She checked the ship's supplies and ensured everything was in order before pushing off from the shore. The longship glided into the dark waters, its sails catching the wind as Freya took her place at the helm. The sky grew gloomy as she maneuvered the dangerous waters, with thick clouds gathering toward the horizon. The waves became frenzied as the wind increased, screaming through the rigging. Icy water sprayed across the deck as waves smashed onto the ship's sides. Tightly gripping the oars, Freya's muscles strained against the storm's might. The strong currents twisted and turned the longship, but Freya did not waver, her gaze fixed on the horizon. The storm grew more intense, lightning flashing across the sky and thunder booming in the distance. The waves grew larger each one threatening to capsize the ship. Freya's heart pounded in her chest, but she remained resolute, her hands steady on the oars. She knew she could not afford to falter. Her people depended on her success. Suddenly, a massive sea serpent rose from the depths, its scales glistening in the lightning's flash. The creature was enormous, its body coiling around the ship with terrifying speed. Its eyes glowed with a malevolent intelligence, and it let out a roar that shook the very air. Freya felt a surge of fear, but quickly pushed it aside, drawing her sword 
and preparing for battle. The serpent lunged at her, its massive jaws snapping shut just inches from her face. Freya dodged to the side, her sword slicing through the air as she struck at the beast. The serpent's scales were tough, deflecting her blows, but she continued to fight, using her shield to block its powerful attacks. The ship rocked violently as the serpent coiled around it, squeezing with immense force. Freya moved with agility and precision, striking at the serpent's vulnerable spots and dodging its deadly strikes. The battle was fierce, the air filled with the sounds of clashing metal and the serpent's roars. The beast's tail whipped through the air, narrowly missing Freya as she ducked and rolled across the deck. She struck again and again, her sword finding its mark and weakening the creature with each blow. Finally, with a well-aimed thrust, Freya pierced the serpent's heart. The creature let out a final, deafening roar before collapsing back into the sea, its body sinking into the dark depths. Freya stood panting on the deck, her sword still clenched in her hand. The battle had been exhausting, but she had emerged victorious. As the serpent disappeared beneath the waves, the storm began to abate. The clouds parted, and the wind calmed, leaving the sea eerily quiet. Freya took a moment to catch her breath, the adrenaline still coursing through her veins. She looked out over the now calm waters, feeling a sense of triumph and relief. With the storm behind her, Freya continued her journey across the Serpent Sea. The longship sailed smoothly through the gentle waves, the dark waters reflecting the light of the setting sun. The bravery she had displayed in the face of the serpent's attack strengthened her resolve, and she knew that the gods were watching over her. As night fell, Freya navigated by the stars, their twinkling lights guiding her path. The sea, though vast and mysterious, no longer seemed as daunting. She knew that more challenges awaited her, but she felt a renewed sense of confidence and determination. The battle with the sea serpent had tested her courage and skill, and she had proven herself worthy. The journey across the Serpent Sea was a pivotal moment in Freya's quest for the Golden Horn of Valhalla. It had shown her that even in the face of great danger, she had the strength and resolve to overcome any obstacle. With the calm waters beneath her and the stars above, Freya sailed on, ready to face whatever lay ahead. As dawn broke on the horizon, casting a golden light over the sea, Freya felt a sense of peace and purpose. She was one step closer to her goal, and nothing would stand in her way. The Serpent Sea, once a place of fear and uncertainty, had become a testament to her courage and determination. Freya smiled as she looked ahead, the promise of new adventures and challenges filling her with anticipation. The next leg of her journey awaited, and with the gods' favor and her unwavering spirit, Freya knew she would succeed. Chapter 3 the Thunder Mountains. Freya's journey led her to the Thunder Mountains, a range of towering peaks that seemed to touch the very sky. The mountains were shrouded in dark, ominous clouds, and the air was thick with the scent of rain and ozone. The landscape was rugged and imposing, with jagged cliffs and steep, rocky paths that tested Freya's endurance and strength. As she began her ascent, the distant rumble of Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, echoed through the valleys, a constant reminder of the god's presence and power. The climb was grueling, each step requiring immense effort and determination.
determination. Freya's muscles strained as she navigated the treacherous terrain, her breath coming in heavy bursts. The rocky paths were narrow and uneven, with loose stones that threatened to give way beneath her feet. She encountered icy ledges where a single misstep could send her plummeting into the abyss below. The cold wind howled through the mountains, cutting through her clothing and chilling her to the bone. Despite the challenges, Freya pressed on, her determination unwavering. She was driven by the vision of the Golden Horn and the promise of aid for her people. She knew that the path to greatness was never easy, and she embraced each obstacle as a test of her resolve. The rumble of Thor's hammer seemed to grow louder as she climbed higher, a constant companion on her arduous journey. At a particularly difficult passage, Freya came across a narrow bridge, spanning a deep chasm. The bridge was made of ancient stone, its surface worn smooth by centuries of wind and rain. As she approached, a fierce giant appeared, his massive form blocking her path. His skin was as tough as stone, and his eyes glowed with a stormy fury. He carried a massive club, which he raised menacingly as he spoke. Only the worthy may pass, the giant thundered, his voice echoing through the mountains. Prove your worth, or turn back. Freya stepped forward, her sword and shield at the ready. Her voice was steady and confident as she declared, I seek the golden horn of Valhalla. I will not be deterred. The giant let out a roar of challenge, and the battle began. Freya moved with agility and precision, using her skill to outmaneuver the giant's powerful blows. She struck at his vulnerable spots, her sword flashing in the dim light. The giant's club crashed down with bone-shaking force, but Freya deftly deflected his attacks with her shield. The air crackled with energy, and the ground trembled beneath their feet as they fought. With each blow of their weapons, the battle was merciless and violent, sending shockwaves across the hillsides. Exertion blazed in Freya's muscles, yet she did not falter. She used every ounce of her strength and ability, moving with lightning-fast accuracy. The behemoth let out a yell of exasperation as she sidestepped his punches and returned fire with lethal precision. Finally, with a swift and decisive strike, Freya pierced the giant's defenses and delivered a fatal blow. The giant let out a roar of defeat as he crumbled to the ground, his massive form shaking the earth. Breathing heavily, Freya stood victorious, her sword still gleaming with the energy of the battle. With the giant defeated, Freya crossed the bridge and continued her ascent. The peak of the Thunder Mountains loomed before her, its jagged silhouette illuminated by flashes of lightning. The air was thick with anticipation, and Freya knew that she was close to her goal. Each step brought her closer to the summit, where the Golden Horn awaited. As she climbed higher, the storm intensified, lightning illuminating the sky in brilliant flashes. The rumble of Thor's hammer was deafening, the air vibrating with the force of each strike. Freya pressed on, her heart pounding with determination. The path grew steeper and more treacherous, but she did not waver. Finally, after what felt like an eternity of climbing, Freya reached the summit. The view from the top was breathtaking, the vast expanse of the mountains stretching out before her. The storm clouds parted, revealing the hall of the honored dead in the distance, its golden light shining like a beacon. The hall stood as a testament to the bravery and valor of the fallen warriors, a place where heroes were honored and remembered. Freya took a moment to catch her breath, 
realization of her journey's end, filling her with a profound sense of accomplishment. She had faced countless challenges and overcome immense obstacles. Her determination and strength carrying her through. The golden horn of Valhalla was within her reach, and she knew that the gods had watched over her every step of the way. With renewed resolve, Freya descended toward the hall, her heart filled with pride and purpose. The Thunder Mountains had tested her in every way, but she had emerged victorious. She was ready to claim the Golden Horn and fulfill her destiny, bringing aid and honor to her people. The journey had been long and arduous, but the rewards would be beyond measure. Chapter 4 The Hall of the Honored Dead At long last, Freya reached the summit of the Thunder Mountains. Before her stood the Hall of the Honored Dead, a magnificent structure built from stone and adorned with intricate carvings. The hall glowed with an otherworldly light, casting a soft, golden hue over the surrounding landscape. The air hummed with the presence of the gods, and Freya felt a profound sense of awe and reverence. The Hall of the Honored Dead was a sight to behold. Its towering columns were etched with scenes of great battles and heroic deeds. Each detail meticulously carved to honor the warriors who had fallen in combat. The doors, made of solid oak and reinforced with iron bands, were adorned with runes that glowed faintly, their light pulsing like a heartbeat. Freya's heart pounded with anticipation as she approached the entrance, feeling the weight of her journey and the significance of this moment. As she stepped inside, Freya was greeted by the spirits of fallen warriors, their forms shimmering with ethereal light. The hall was filled with the sound of their voices, singing songs of valor and glory that echoed off the stone walls. The ceiling arched high above, painted with images of the gods and the stars, creating a celestial canopy that seemed to stretch into eternity. The spirits moved gracefully, their eyes filled with wisdom and pride. They acknowledged Freya with nods and smiles, recognizing her as a worthy warrior who had completed a great quest. The atmosphere was one of solemn celebration, a place where the past and present intertwined, and where honor and bravery were eternally remembered. At the far end of the hall, on a pedestal of gold, rested the golden horn of Valhalla. The horn was a masterpiece of craftsmanship, its surface engraved with intricate runes and symbols that glowed with divine light. The sight of it filled Freya with a sense of fulfillment and anticipation. This was the object of her quest, the artifact that would allow her to summon the gods and bring aid to her people. As she approached the pedestal, Nimue, the Lady of the Lake, appeared before her. Nimue's presence was serene and comforting, her eyes shining with pride and kindness. You have proven yourself worthy, Freya, she said, her voice resonating with power and grace. The golden horn is yours. With it, you will summon the gods and bring aid to your people. Moving on, Freya removed the golden horn from its pedestal. She had a rush of strength and destiny as she did. The horn was exquisitely constructed, with a cool, smooth surface and runes that shone brightly as she held it. A cry to the skies was heard as she lifted the horn to her lips and let out a single, distinct note that reverberated throughout the hall and beyond. The sound of the horn was pure and powerful, echoing through the mountains and into the sky. The 
the spirits of the fallen warriors cheered, their voices rising in a chorus of triumph and celebration. Freya felt a profound connection to the warriors and the gods, a sense of unity and purpose that filled her with strength and determination. Freya knew that her quest was complete, and that she had the power to call upon the gods in times of need. With the golden horn of Valhalla in her possession, she had fulfilled her destiny and secured the means to protect and guide her people. The journey had been long and arduous, filled with challenges and trials, but she had emerged victorious, stronger, and wiser. With a heart full of gratitude and pride, Freya left the Hall of the Honored Dead. She descended the Thunder Mountains, the Golden Horn safely in her grasp. The path ahead was still filled with challenges, but Freya knew that with the gods by her side, she could face anything. The rich tapestry of Norse mythology had guided her through her quest, and now, as she stood on the brink of a new era, she felt a profound sense of purpose and hope for the future. Returning to her village, Freya was greeted with cheers and celebrations. Her people recognized the Golden Horn and understood the significance of her achievement. Freya stood before them, her spirit strong and her resolve unshaken. She knew that the journey had only just begun, but with the Golden Horn and the blessings of the gods, she was ready to lead her people to a future filled with prosperity and peace. The tale of Freya's quest for the Golden Horn of Valhalla would be told for generations, a story of bravery, determination, and the enduring power of the human spirit. It was a testament to the strength and resilience of those who dared to dream and strive for greatness, a beacon of hope for all who sought to make their mark on the world. And as Freya looked out over her village, she knew that the gods were watching over her, guiding her every step, and that the future held endless possibilities. <laughs>